Alright guys, welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at the creation suite in AW Fight Forever, including a full breakdown of create a wrestler, move sets, entrances and create an arena. So let's jump straight into this and take a look at the options that we do have, starting out with create a wrestler mode, where players have the choice of creating a new male or female character as well as customising an existing one. So to run you through this, let's take a look at the process of creating a new male wrestler, where upon selecting that option, we're taken to the overview screen, which displays a preview of the character and their details. Selecting the original tab takes us to the main edit screen, where we have options to edit our character's profile, their ring and entrance attire, and a street clothes attire, which is used for cutscenes, as well as options to set their moveset and their entrance. Selecting the profile option takes us into the character options where we begin by selecting our character's name, their display name, announce name and their social media handle. When browsing the list of announce names, there's a lot of options to choose from, but these include the majority of the names used by the AEW stars, both those in the game and those that missed out, as well as a healthy selection of generic names including some well-known names that have never appeared in AEW. Other options included under the profile tab include options to set the crowd reaction which can be set to cheer, boo or mixed, an option to set your birth date and your hometown, a weapon of choice that lets you select one of 39 different weapons with a weapon that you select having a higher chance of appearing when pulling a weapon at ringside. Also customisable is your pose which can be used when selecting your character and then you have some unique options that include an AI type which is a template for how the character will act when controlled by the AI. Rounding out the profile options we also have the option to select a voice for our character which will customise the reactions that we hear during matches. Switching over to the face tab, this is where we can begin to customise our character's appearance with options to customise their face type, their eyes, eyebrows, hair and facial hair. Unlike previous games from Ux that feature a very in-depth creation suite with lots of different options, the options available in Fight Forever are extremely limited. To give you an example of just how limited the options are, there are only 8 face templates available with the only sub-options being a selection of skin types as the mode doesn't feature any customization sliders which sadly means that all male creations will have one of these 8 faces. These limitations are also true for the other face elements where there's only 4 types of eyes and 5 different eyebrows. Taking a look at the hair options, this section offers up 17 hair choices featuring a mixture of short to long styles with sub options giving you the ability to select a preset colour. As for facial hair, there's 8 designs available, only one of which is a longer style while the remainder of them are all quite thin. Given the limitations, there's obviously not going to be too much difference in one creation from another as there's simply no way to customise the face of a character outside of the preset options. Switching to the body tab, here we can make some customisations, though again the options are very, very limited. These include selecting one of four preset body types which includes skinny, fat and muscular tones, the option of one of four different body hair types and then body settings which is the only section to include some sliders as here we can set our character's height, the amount of fat and muscle and then their overall weight class. So that's all of the appearance options, next let's move on to the attire options starting with the ring attire where the head options include headwear, glasses, masks, accessories face paint and scars. Scrolling through the headwear options, as you can see there are a few different options available, though once you scroll halfway through the list you will notice that more than half of the items are actually the same hat with different logos or flags on it which is something that is sadly repeated with a lot of the other different clothing parts. Scrolling through some of the other headwear options, you can see further how limited the mode is as there is very little to choose from, some of which you couldn't even choose if you wanted to as certain items require that you purchase them using money that you've earned from playing matches which given the already limited options feels like a kick in the teeth. Switching to the upper body section and taking a look at the arm options, this section includes 4 elbow pads that can be customised with a different colour and then 9 camo designs that can't be modified. There are a few more designs when it comes to wrist pads as all these options can be colourised and then we have the accessory section which includes a handful of options such as dog tags and scarves. Also available are scars which can look quite good though they're all set in a specific position with no options to move them. Moving on to the lower parts, the bottom category offers up some generic designs though again this section is also padded out with camo and flag designs which make up for more than half of the available options. 
Interestingly, one thing that I did notice was that this section includes two sets of tights for Kenny Omega, which hopefully is an indication that wrestler parts will be added in the future as that would add a lot of new options, though currently these parts and their accompanying knee pads and boots are the only wrestler parts in this entire mode. The final tab is the full body tab, which includes several full outfits, with these including options for various singlets as well as some unlockable items like this bear outfit. Other full body options include body paint, which includes designs like Japanese text, a red demon paint and then a green hulk design. Finally, we also have tattoos, though unlike the scars option, these are all pre-placed, meaning you can't move them and you're also limited to just one design as there's no option to apply multiple. So that's all the appearance options. You may have noticed that there were no options for tops or t-shirts, as weirdly you can only select a top as part of an entrance attire. So on that note, taking a look at the entrance attire options, these are restricted to selecting a top or a jacket as you can't use masks or any other items during an entrance. Running through the options, the top section includes a lot of t-shirts for the AEW stars, a lot of which don't seem to be used as most of the stars featured in Road to Elite wear the generic city shirts as each city that you visit in Road to Elite unlocks a new shirt based on that location. Switching over to the jacket options, there's a few items to choose from, including some unlockable capes, and then when editing the video, I noticed Jericho's jacket in there, so again, hopefully in the future, more parts from the AEW stars start to appear. Heading back to the main character menu, we also have an option for street clothes, which is used during cutscenes. When selecting a street clothes attire, players actually have more choice than they do with the regular attire options as the street clothes section includes all the base parts as well as the top and jacket options that were limited to entrances. Before we jump into the moveset and entrance options, if we back up to the main character screen, one other thing that I want to mention is the new preset option as selecting this option will create a new alternate attire as it's possible to create up to 5 different attires per character. You can also press the options button when selecting one of the presets to bring up some template options as the game includes 5 different templates so that you can quickly create a character using a preset design. So that's the create a wrestler feature, next let's take a look at create a moveset which you can access via the moveset tab when creating or editing a character. While the appearance options were extremely limited, the moveset options are where the game truly shines as the game includes a large library of moves that have all been created by hand, with these including brand new moves that are exclusive to AEW as well as a lot of moves that appear to be recreations of moves seen in some of Yuke's previous games. Due to the style of the game, the majority of the moves all feature more of an arcade feel rather than simulation, though there's a good mixture of over the top moves like Wardlow's F10 as well as more general moves like you'd find in WWE 2K. One of the best features in regards to movesets is the ability to set up to 5 signatures and 5 finishes as the developers have added a lot of different move variations with one example being Kenny Omega's V Trigger as you can set up multiple versions of the move to use as a finisher from different positions. Scrolling through the list of move positions, pretty much all of the positions that we've come to expect in the Rival 2K series are here, along with some new ones, as the game includes new barricade and guardrail options where you'll find options to set guardrail dives and seated moves. Next up, let's take a look at the entrance options, which like movesets can be selected when creating or editing a character. While a lot has been made of AEW's decision to go with short entrances, one thing it has done is give them time to create a lot of custom options as alongside the entrance motions for all of the AEW stars, the entrance motions also include more than 100 generic options, a lot of which include entrance motions for WWE stars such as Roman Reigns and Finn Balor, though a lot of those require unlocking it through the AEW shop. Along with selecting an entrance motion, players can also customise several advanced settings, with these including the option to select a championship motion. Also available, we have some unique options to customise your entrance, as players can select a hand gesture that will see the motion updated to use that specific gesture. If you selected an entrance that uses a prop item, such as a kendo stick, then the advanced settings also include the ability to customise the prop that's used, as players can switch out the kendo stick with a different weapon. Other options under the advanced settings include various filter and effect options as it's possible to set up to 4 different filters to directions on the d-pad which you can then trigger during your entrance. These filters include things like changing the screen colour to black and white, blocking out or blurring the player's face, adding TV static and various other filters. 
As for effects, you can assign four of these to the controller's face buttons. These include a lot of different power options, smoke, fog, and even special effects like streamers and confetti, as well as a garbage barrage that sees the crowd throwing trash. So there's a lot of options in there, and despite the entrances being short, there's a lot that can be customised. As for theme music, all of the in-game star's music is here, including Cody Rhodes' Kingdom, which you can use with anyone, plus there's also additional music options, generic tracks, and the inclusion of special 8-bit themes, which are perfect should you not want to risk running into copyright problems when recording or streaming online. Like music, there's also a ton of options for entrance videos, including all of the AEW show graphics and the trons for the stars on the roster, a lot of which also include updated trons, as certain stars have multiple trons to choose from, such as Chris Jericho, who has 9 trons available. So that's a full preview of Create a Wrestler and all of the options that it includes. Next though, let's turn our focus over to Create an Arena, as Fight Forever also includes its own arena creator, which also has some unique features. When first loading up the Arena Creator, the layout mirrors that of the Wrestler Creator, with the first tab giving us the ability to customise the Arena settings such as its name, matchup screen and transition. Scrolling through the options, all of the in-game AEW options are available, though there's no generic options if you're wanting to create something unique. If we head into the ring category, here we can start customising our ring, where selecting the mat option reveals ring mats that feature the AW show logos, some generic coloured mats, and a selection of pattern designs, including a blood splatter design should you want to make things look even more extreme. Other ring options include the ability to customise the colour of the ropes, which you can colour individually or all at once, as well as the colour of the corner posts and the corner joints. Taking a look at the corner pad options, all of the AEW pads are included, along with some generic designs, with the game also featuring some large padded corner posts like you would see in a boxing ring, though some of these options do require that you purchase them before they can be used. Also featuring similar designs is the apron, with options for all of the in-game shows, as well as the generic and pattern designs. Then switching over to the ringside options, these include the option to customise the floor mat, as well as the arena floor, with an option also included for the guardrail, which you can customise with the AEW designs or a generic one. As for the stage design, there's only a handful of options available, with 4 AEW designs and then 4 unlockable custom ones. Other stage options include the ability to customise the video screen, which can be set to one of the AW trons or a pattern design, with the same options also available when customising the ramp. The most unique feature comes in regards to objects, which are essentially stage props, as players can choose from a variety of different props that include AW items such as a stack of poker chips from Double or Nothing, a news podium, cans of Stinger energy drink, and then various generic items, some of which are animated, such as this holographic globe or a selection of animals. The only downside to the stage props is that you can't access the area that they're placed in, so there's no way to interact with them. The last of the arena settings that you can customise is the lighting, with options to change the LED lights, the spotlights and the stage lights, which you can use to shine a different colour on the stage and the ramp. So that's a breakdown of the creation suite options in AW Fight Forever. One thing that I did want to add after editing the video was that in regards to editing the in-game characters, while you can customise their entrance and their movesets, the only changes that you can make to their appearance is to give them a top. So to sum up the creation suite, it is extremely limited with the options that are available, especially when you know that Yooks have offered up so much more in the past. So unless there's a big update plan to add in all the missing wrestler parts or more customization options like appearance sliders, then it's hard to see there being any real interest in the creation suite, aside from maybe using it to create a custom character for Road to Elite. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what to expect from the creation suite in AW Fight Forever. Let me know what you think of it now that you've seen it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have yourself an awesome day. I'll catch you later.